big city is full of people, and some people are full of crime. We know a lot about the big crime experts, the mastermind detectives, the nationwide hard-hitting FBI. But before they reach the scene of a crime, there are generally some other guys who get there first. The men in prowl cars. The radio patrol. Their best weapons are a radio set and four wheels. Their battleground is every city street. Sometimes they win, sometimes they lose. For well, their kind of enemy never rests or surrenders. Our story begins where most radio call activity usually begins. In the nerve center of headquarters, the communications division. 18, 1, 8, 4120 Crenton. 4120 Crenton. See the woman, keep the peace. All units, stolen car in the four column. 18 X ray 466. 48 Buick sedan, gray. License again, 18 X ray 466. Heavy evening so far. Two disturbing the peace calls and one drunk arrest. I don't know whether I can stand it. Night's still fresh. Don't give up yet. Knock off and get a cup of coffee, huh, Dan? How about covering the territory for a while, just out of curiosity? Once, Daniel, I'd like to see you relax a little on duty. I have to set a good example for you, Junior. Don't forget, I'm trying to make a policeman out of you someday. Give me a flash when you figure I've made it, will you? 13 one, three, two, eight, six, Tremont. Possible 459 suspects. Code 2, two men at rear of garage. There now. Looks like I spoke a little too soon. 13 Roger. 13 Roger. That's Tremont. 286 should be halfway down the block. Uh-huh. There's a car down there. Maybe a lookout. Get set. Set, Trevi. You too. I wouldn't do that. You heard him. Come on. What are you waiting for? Get out. What are you trying to blast the horn for? Your boyfriend's around here in a caper? We ain't with any guys. We were just sitting there thinking of something to do. Yeah, we'll sit in our car and do your thing. Oh, but officer, All waiting. Right, later, later. Come on, get in. <laughs> Car 13, on that 459 call to 286 Tremont Street. Picked up two female suspects, investigating two male suspects. Need another car on code two. 13, Roger. I'll take a look in the front door, Patty. Watch your step. You guys are crazy. We weren't doing nothing, and we ain't with no guys. Your girlfriend seems kind of worried about something. So she's afraid of cops. So what's that prove? I'll tell you later. Dan. Hi, Charlie. You watch these girls, will you? Looks like their boyfriends are on a job around here. Knock off, copper. I tell you, you're crazy. I don't see anything, but the nightlight's been turned off. Eddie, you cover the front of the building. Barnes and I will go around the rear.
Get back up against the wall, you get the next one in the head. Jenny's coming down your way. Suspects in custody. 13 out for receiving hospital. How old are you? What's your name? Come on, you heard him. What's your name? His driver's license says Joe Nottie. Book him that way until we run a make on his prints. <laughs> Cutie was wearing a fancy hairpin tucked away in that gun. They both claim they're 17. We'll take him to juvenile. Oh, please, officer. Please. I've never been in trouble before. My mom killed me. She'll kill me. Well, you're in trouble now, sister. You should have thought of that before you started running around with these hoodlums. Are you going to put us in jail? Uh-huh. Oh, no, no, don't. No, please. I don't want to go to jail. No, I didn't. 101, assist 103 at 722 South Anaheim, a major 415. You know, I felt sorry for that kid, the one who was doing all the blubbering. She was really scared. They're all scared the first time they're caught. In another year, she'll be packing a shiv, ready to stick it in somebody's gut if she has to. Maybe your gut. Still don't get this Jekyll and Hyde twist. Purvis, the big-hearted, nice guy civilian. Purvis, the tough cop, mow him down. Don't give him a second chance. Well, you've had your fill of the scum. Slugging, knifing, shooting holes in decent people. You'll toughen up, Junior. Maybe. They can't all be wrong all the way through. You ought to look inside. Maybe some of them rate a second chance. I can read it from the outside. I haven't been wrong yet. 18, 1 8, 2416 Hull Street. See the man, keep the peace. There she is, right on schedule, 10.31. Here we go again. 14, call your station. Oh, get those velvet tones, restful and loving. That's what you said the first time you heard Tokyo Rose. So I can't be wrong twice, can I? I tell you, we've got to find out who this girl is. We don't have to find out anything. If you start hanging around communications, you'll find yourself walking a beat somewhere. She's got a nice voice, and that's probably as far as it goes. Unit on frequency four, will you repeat, please? You know the trouble with you, Pappy? You've got no imagination. Till I see this girl myself, I won't believe that this voice doesn't go with a real charmer. 13, 1, 3, 246 Union Street, a 415. See the man about unknown trouble. 13, Roger. Ma la rotta un cuore scuolato, il piego scuola mi c'era l'astro, ma costa 25 pezzi. Ma tu l'hai poco, faccia la salone. A poco, a poco. Ma posso pensare a capo che sei pronto? A perché ho sangue, a poco, da fatti. Take it easy, take it easy. What's the trouble, Romano? What's the matter? You know, smell a stinging bum? They threw a stinging bum right in through my beautiful window. My customer, they have to get out. Fatta sì, tu non dici niente di più, è calma, te calma, te mo'. Who threw the bomb, Romano? Oh, somebody, some... Fatta sì, tu non dici niente di più, non vuoi farmi carcerata, tutto perché? Perché ti dà un calarico, parla sempre... E' stata sì, tra poco non parla più. Anybody know what she's talking about? She's a teller him with a shut up. That's right. Thanks. You're welcome. Anyone here see who threw the bomb? I see a man that walk in and go in the back room with Romano. And right after, the bomb came through the window. What did the man look like? Oh, I was eating. I, I pay no attention. Uh -huh. Come on over here, Romano. I want to have a little talk with you. You wake up. All right, what's the matter? You got no hope. Come on, break it up. All right, listen now, Romano. Don't be afraid. Tell the truth. When the Garris' boys come around, try to sell you their Western Linen Supply Service. Garris, I, I, nobody's telling me nothing. I see nobody. Guy was standing behind you when he messed your kisser up like that, huh? I, I run into the door when uh, the bomber smashed my window. 
door. All right, Romano, but you'll have to come down to the station and make a report about it. We'll see you there in a few minutes. I make a report, but I don't see who done it. Yeah, yeah. Thirteen, got another one, Pepe? Yeah. On that 415 on Union Street, handled. Thirteen, clear. KMA 367. I don't know what the idea is of sending Romano down the station. If he won't make a complaint, we're licked. He may get guts enough to identify the guy when he sees him in custody at headquarters. And who are we going to take into custody? Playing a hunch. We're going to take a little ride over to Garrison's Starlight Club. Might be able to hang a rap on one of his boys. Good deal, Pappy. Lincoln hasn't been out. The convertible's still hot. I figured Quist would be our boy. Give me a hand with the front seat, Danny. Uh-huh. That's a coincidence. A couple of stink bombs. Quist around? Oh, I think he's in the office, right around the corner. Kiss can do from you, from you, from you. Take me, teach me how a heart should feel. When to know it's real, I yearn to learn. What should I whisper when we're alone? something? How long have you been in the club, Quist? All night? Why? It's only been using your car. The motor's still hot. So what? So you shouldn't leave stink bombs in your car, especially right after throwing one through some little guy's window. Oh, we use those bombs in the club to kill rats. Yeah, that's the place that's got them. How does it make you feel to slap a little old man like Romano around, huh? Make you feel tough? Big muscle man? Well, here's your hat, muscles. You're going down to the station. Well, if it isn't Mr. Garris himself. You boys mind if I use my office? Not at all. Thanks. See you later. What's going on? Your number one stooge is on his way out, Garris. We're taking Quist in. What are you arresting Joe for? Assault and battery, malicious damage. We'll think of a couple of more charges on the way to the station. Oh. So you're, uh, pitching to make a name for yourselves, huh? Let's call her trying to keep the streets clean, Garris. Oh, wait a minute. One of you boys dropped the bill. Hundred dollars. Must be yours, Daniel. I only carry fifties. Couldn't be mine. Lately, I've been carrying my pay in one grand notes. It's a cheap, small-time guy, Garris, just like you and your whole crowd. Bunch of two-bit grifters riding over your heads. Hold it! Next time the cops got business in my place, tell them don't send no penny ante flatfoots. We're sorry, Mr. Garris. We didn't know how important you are. Stay away from me, messenger boys. I'm giving you one warning. Keep your nose out of my business. <laughs> See you again, big man. Now, look, Romano, you don't have to be scared of anybody. Was this man in your place tonight? I never saw this man before. All you have to do is identify him, Romano. We'll put him in jail. You won't be bothered with him again. I told you I, I don't know this man. You don't, huh? No. It's no use, Purvis. Garris's lawyer is on his way over. Their bail bondsman is waiting. We don't have anything to hold him on anyway. Good evening, Lieutenant. Tell me, uh, what charge are you booking Mr. Quist on? We decided we don't want him, Oliver. We 
We just had our jail fumigated. Glad to hear it. Your boys must have been having a pretty dull evening. Tell them to be sure they have a case the next time they hustle one of my clients down here. Don't bother me with your legal hocus pocus. Take your creep and beat it. Pardon me. Take it easy, Pappy. One of these days we'll make it stick. Yeah, yeah. The next time you birds arrest a couple of those young fillies, you can handle them yourselves. What's the matter? They give you trouble? Yeah, that balling kid made me feel like Simon Legree. She finally keeled over in a faint. I had to carry her into juvenile hall. She ever been picked up before, Charlie? Nah, the kid had no record. Juvenile's keeping her overnight, but they think she's okay. She just didn't know the score. You hear that, Daniel? I heard it, I heard it. What do you want me to do, adopt the kid? Speaking of fillies, how about those cream and honey tones of that new girl on the late shift broadcast? Yeah, she sounds mighty nice, huh? No, I don't pay no attention to female voices no more. Six years ago, I listened to a pretty voice back home in Texas. Now I got four kids. <laughs> <laughs> Our boy Barnes starting to pick his women by the way they saw him, Purvis. That's Junior, still wet behind the ears. All right, all right. Just to show you comedians that I can pick Miss Hush by her voice, I've got a five spot that says she's a real pretty doll. Get him a five spot. What are you doing, printing your own money now? All right, so we make it a buck that she's good looking. Well, you're covered. She's probably a dog and it'll cost you money to learn your lesson. Man, oh man, what this police department's coming to. Hey, it just hit me. Beginning of next week, we start on day shift. We won't be getting her anymore. I have tidings for you, son. I've been looking forward to that. Oh, well. Can't have everything. 122, Avenue 60 and Crescent. The 390 down. 84, go make. Hey, there's your chance for a workout. Think you can handle it? I'll try. All right, man. The fight's over. Let's break it up. Come on. Now, what's the brawl about? Oh, this Petey, he won't ever knuckle down tight. Says you. He wins all the Aggies, then he starts a fight. Put him in jail, cop. He's always coming around fighting. Yeah, arrest him. Put him in jail, cop. Real bad guy, huh? What's your name, villain? Peter J. Conklin. You live around here? Four blocks over. 2813, 46th Street. All right, Mr. Conklin. Let's take a ride. Who's that? Just my brother. Get in. How many years do you think he'll get? Five, at least. He'll be an old man when he gets out. Yeah. 4.15, Daniel. Almost time to knock off. Hey, you guys gonna put the handcuffs on me? We're fresh out of handcuffs. We'll have to take a chance. How do you like that? No handcuffs. Yeah, no handcuffs. Shut up. You say he's your brother? Yeah. Well, he doesn't look like it. I ain't complaining. You know, I must have had lead in my head figuring this day watch was a break. You get more action in the chess tournament. What do you want, somebody bouncing bullets off your noggin every night? How long a stretch do you think I'll get? Ten years of being a pest. It's not only lack of exercise. I miss my doll with the honey tones. You know what? This car 13 jinx has finally hit us. One more crack about a car 13 jinx and something else is liable to hit you. You guys gonna leave me a third degree in jail? No, I'll let your mother give you the third degree, Petey. Tell her the policeman brought you home. And stay off that other block, will you? Cops, can't even arrest a guy. Yeah, can't even arrest a guy. Shut up. By the way, what's his name? Thurlow. Thurlow? What else she gonna call a guy that looks like him? What'd you say, you lived again? 2813, right over there. Thanks. Huh, cops. Hey, Petey. Yeah? Remember, no more fighting on the other block. It's okay with me. I can fight just as good on this block. Yeah, you can fight just as good on this block. Come on, Thurlow. The next paperweight champion of the world, huh? Could be. Enter home, Daniel. We'll just about make the station by five, right? Hello, Joe. Look sharp. Look sharp. Tell me you're gonna play poker and you'll wind up arrested at a stag party with a girl. Well, fellas gotta relax sometime. Well, from now on, you relax at home. And due to this prevailing condition, I feel that circumstances make it advisable to assign more officers to this district. That's as far as we got, Lieutenant. Patty, that's her, Miss Hush. You're know, Patty. What would she be doing in Masterson's office? I tell you, it's her. I know that voice in my sleep. I thought we were through playing that game. Come on. 
Oh, now, wait a minute, Daniel. I've got to satisfy my hunch about this girl. Rocky, you're crazy. What are you going to do, walk right into Masterson's office and say hello? I need a gag. Yeah, in your mouth, you need a gag. I've got it. Wait here, I'll be right out. Can I see you for a minute, Lieutenant? Yeah, sure. Send that to all departments, Kate. Sorry, I didn't know you were busy. Oh, no, that's all right. What is it, Barnes? Barnes. Pardon me. You were going to ask me a question. Oh, nothing, Lieutenant. I'm sorry. You're busy. I don't want to take up your time. Oh, that's all right. Stick around. That's all for now, Kate. File up with the rest. Hey, Barnes. Yes, sir? You were going to ask me a question. Oh, you know about the mail truck? What mail truck? Well, it double parks in our district every day at noon, ties up traffic, and we wonder what to do about it. I assume you went through training school, Barnes? Yes, sir. I assume you paid a certain amount of attention to instructions? Yes, sir. And you never heard it's department policy to allow a government truck to double park if there's no parking space within 150 feet? Uh, well, it, uh, it must have slipped my mind, huh? Oh, must have. Thank you, Lieutenant. You're welcome. Very interesting. Oh, hello, Ryan. That's a lot better than the old system. Seems to work very well. Uh-huh. I'm all for it. Yeah. Oh, uh, I'm sorry, Rocky. May I present Miss Catherine Mallory, Officer Barnes. How do you do? Miss Mallory. That's right. Mm -hmm. You're getting downright bold, Daniel. What else did you find out? Well, Miss Mallory joined the department about four weeks ago. She was a substitute in broadcasting for two weeks, and she's now assigned here as stenographic and record clerk. Well, for a guy that clams up around women, you're doing uh, very well. Well, I just thought I'd save Miss Mallory the trouble of filling out your questionnaire. Come on. Uh, wait a minute. Miss Mallory, uh, do you mind if I call you Kate? You might as well. I have a feeling you'll get around to it in a minute anyway. Kate. Hmm? Tonight you're having dinner with two very lonely policemen. Am I now? And who might they be? Two of the force's finest, most handsome, entertaining gentlemen. Sounds like one of them could be Officer Purvis. Well, thank you. But who is the other one? Who's the other one? Mm-hmm. The other one is just the guy who bet you were as pretty as your voice. And that was a notable understatement. <laughs> Flattery will get you nowhere, Officer Barnes. Now go on about your business. Well, we pick you up and, uh, at what time? Really, Officer Barnes, I don't even know you. Well, what could be safer than going out with two policemen? Well, I'll admit you've got a point there. Huh. Well, then you go. No. That's a straight answer, if ever I heard one. Well, why not? Give me one good reason. I, um, uh, I have to work late tonight. Lieutenant Masterson asked me to stay and help him catch up on back reports. Oh, that's too bad. Well, then tomorrow night, okay? Please, I've got a lot of work to finish yet. Oh, come on, Rocky, give up, will you? Yeah, come on, Rocky, give up, will you? I'm going to Captain Ever's office, Kate. Yes, Lieutenant. Oh, uh, call my wife. Tell her I'll be home for dinner by 6 tonight. Mm-hmm. I don't know, Daniel. We must be pretty horrible. When a nice young girl like this will do anything, even lie to get out of a date with us. The gruesome twosome. It's kind of a rough awakening, isn't it? Please, it's not that at all. It kind of crushes one's pride. Supposed to prove that you never really know how people feel about you. You know perfectly well I don't consider you horrible. Thank you, Miss Mallory. It's just that, well, I have personal reasons why... You needn't apologize to us. It's quite all right. You don't have to explain. We promise you we'll never bother you again. Just tell me one thing, will you? Why won't you All have... right, all right. I'll go to dinner with you. Here, pick me up at 7.30 at home. Now get out of here and let me finish my work. Your work. Said our shirts come back from the laundry, eh? Mine did. Then don't take your lips or your arms or your love away. Well, take a bow, Rocky. Looks like they've been expecting us. Good evening. Three, please. Follow me, please. All the nightclubs in town, we've got to come to this crummy joint. Well, that's what happens when you take Purvis on a date. Relax, will you? You won't be here long. 
in this table. Satisfactory, sir? Yes, fine, thank you. Yes, sir. Look, Pappy, in the future, play detective on your own time, will you? We're supposed to be impressing the girl. Well, I am impressed. I've never been in a place like this before. I think it's very interesting. We don't have to eat the punk's food, do we? Let's not carry this too far. Would you like to order? And hey, you want to drink cake? Uh, sherry. Sherry? Give me an old-fashioned and a bourbon water for Dad. That's me. She's my daughter. <laughs> <laughs> you happy? Mm-hmm. Comfy? Um, say, tell me about this Garris. I've only read about him in the newspapers. Garris? Well, I've done more than read about him. Nine years ago, Garris was just a tough East Side kid running a couple of two-bit bookie joints. During the war, he and his pals were there shooting here in town instead of at the front. I guess they figured they could come up faster that way. What lovely people. Look, Kate. You're being new in the department. Let me set you straight about something. Not all policemen are like Pappy here. Some of us can relax and forget about business when we're off duty. It's sure in your waist and your breath telling a policeman's daughter anything about policeman, Officer Barnes. Say, you're not Lieutenant Mallory's daughter, are you? Mm -hmm. Did you know him? No. He was killed a few months before I joined the force. We both heard a lot about him. They tell me he was one of the really great guys. I'm glad they think so, because we did. Well, she's got all the qualifications. Even comes from an illustrious family. I'll say she does. I think we ought to drink to that. To a long and happy life together. The three of us. Yeah, that sounds a little crowded, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> hey. What's the matter? That guy coming in. What about him? You mean to tell me you don't recognize that bird? Looks vaguely familiar, but no bells are ringing. Who is he? Leo Cusick. You sure? Yeah, you would be. You're getting the Class A tour tonight. Cusick's one of the big mobsters from the East. Oh? The guy that's just come up to the table, that's Louis Fernissi. Used to be a big racketeer here in town. Now he just runs this joint for Garris. What do you figure Cusick's doing here in town? Paying him a little social call, and apparently he doesn't like waiting for Garris. I think I'm gonna call the detective bureau, give him a little hot tip. See you later. Should I just uh, take a streetcar home, or do I at least get a dance out of the evening? The light-footed pride of the force at your service, ma'am. Yes, indeed. You know, I've been waiting a long time for this. Almost four weeks, anyway. I can believe it. I feel a rib cracking. Oh, control yourself, Barnes. This lady's got to last. I'm a little rusty. I haven't been doing too much of this lately. Neither have I. We sound like a couple of old age pensioners. Miss Mallory, that's your fault. You shouldn't have waited so long before joining the department. That's what Lieutenant Masterson used to say. He was Dad's best friend. He's been after me for two years to take a job there. Why didn't you? Mm, stubborn Irish pride, among other things. I thought he was just being nice to me. How could he help it? <laughs> For partners, you and Dan Purvis are certainly complete opposites. Are you ever as serious about things as he is? But of course, at the proper moments. But this isn't one of them. So, I had my boys looking this territory over. Fine business prospects here. And I like the climate. Yeah, it's good climate. Understand you run a few places in town here, Garris. You understand right. My men have started setting up our organization. I think I could find a place for you and your people. It's real nice of you, Cusick. But uh, we're kind of used to working for ourselves. You're not a bright boy, Garris. You should kiss a rabbit's foot being offered a chance to work for Leo Cusick. You know something? I've been getting along fine without any rabbit's foot. You'll get along a lot better if you play ball. Now, I don't like trouble, if it can be avoided. Think it over. Harry, he'll be around to see you in about a week. Sure. I'll give it a lot of thought. I'll stay awake nights thinking it over. While you're at it, Garris, get rid of that blown-up idea you're a big man. Good 
cause you a lot of trouble. I bet you found out he can't dance, huh? Well... Go ahead. Tell him. Before you come to any decisions, I'm worse. <laughs> <laughs> hey, King. See that girl over there sitting down in the black dress? Mm-hmm. What about the girl in the black dress? Terry Romaine, Garris's girlfriend. She's not a bad-looking doll. All of a sudden, your taste is in your feet, not head. Any dame that would hook up with a character like Garris is a no-good, filthy tramp. Well, did that come out of you? Don't let her worry, Kate. He always starts spitting fire when he's around people like these. He seems so calm and easygoing. Say, looks like we're gonna have a visitor. Mr. Big Noise himself. Well, you boys must have liked the place. And where you come back? Nope, just slumming, Garris. What do you want here? You heard the man. He said we were slumming. We're showing the young lady how the things under the rocks live. Really picked the right evening. They're all crawling out tonight. I'll tell you once more for the last time. Stay away from me, you tin badge flatfoots. You're scaring us to death, Garris. Yeah, we're shaking in our shoes. So help me. You clowns keep sticking your beaks in my business, you're gonna be a couple of sad monkeys one of these days. Oh, you listen to me, Garris. You stick this in the back of your filthy brain and keep it there. We're gonna keep minding your business till you and your gorillas are tucked away in cages where you belong. Now, come on, let's get out of the zoo and eat with some human beings. Let's not get rough, big man. Here, buy yourself a new head, one with a brain in it. Thanks, fellas. It's been fun. The underworld tour, the dinner, and everything. Think nothing of it. You haven't begun to live, child. Tomorrow night, we really break out. Dinner, a show, a nightclub after, no. and there's a... This was it, Rocky. No more dates. No more dates? What do you mean? What's the matter? Don't you like that? <laughs> Certainly very much. Oh, thank you. Well, it couldn't be me. Well, surprisingly enough, it isn't. I think you're nice, too. You do? Mm-hmm. I'm amazed. <laughs> The door, please. Well, you heard the lady. Come on, the door. But look, Kate, I don't get it. It's a rule. A rule I made a long time ago. Never go out with a policeman more than once. Good night. Good night? Mm-hmm. Come on. Hey, wait a minute, Pappy. This calls for Barnes' advanced operation. Uh, just a minute, Kate. I said good night, and thanks again. Well, you're the guy that knows all about women. Why do you make of this? I don't get it. She likes us. She even likes you. She doesn't want to go out with us again. When you get it figured out, Professor, let me know, will you? Yeah, I'll do that. You know something? I'm still not convinced she likes you. Have a good time, dear. Fine. You should be asleep. I'm glad you finally met some nice boys like that. I like them both. So do I. But I'm not going out with them again. Kate, you're not still hanging on to that foolish notion of yours. You bet I am. A policeman's still going to have no part in Catherine Mallory's romantic life. You're not being very fair to the police department, dear. I can't help it, Mom. I just don't intend to go through what you did every time Dad went on duty. The man I marry is... is going to work in a nice, safe office. I never had any regrets, Kate. Except that once. That once is what made up my mind, Mother. That night they came to tell you about Dad. I'll never forget the way you looked. But that doesn't happen to every policeman's wife. No, but they all expect it. Their hearts stop beating every time the doorbell rings. 
This is one little girl who's not going to get herself in that spot. Mm -hmm. Night, Mom. Good night, dear. Say, Woods, roll call is at 8 o'clock. Let's be on time tomorrow. Two 11 suspects in Teletype 61 are male Caucasians, no further description. They are believed headed for this city and all are armed. That's it. We've got a special headquarters bulletin for all Central Division units. Last week, officers Purvis and Barnes paid an off-duty visit to Richie Garris's night spot, the Starlight Club. Strictly business, of course. <laughs> At any rate, they picked the right night. They spotted Leo Cusick in there visiting Garris. The intelligence unit followed up their tip. The report just came in today. Now listen, men. Cusick and company are moving in out here. Their base of operations is a place called the Premier Loan Company in Central Division territory at 449 Archer Street. That's just a few blocks from Garris's nightclub, Lieutenant. That's right. The loan company is a licensed business. It's just been opened by a couple of Cusick associates, Harry Yost and Herb Sharkey. It's a new gimmick Cusick's been using back east. They let the suckers run up a big tab in their gambling and bookie joints. When they're in over their heads, they take them to Cusick's loan outfit. The sucker borrows what he owes and signs a lien for his house, car, salary, whatever he's got for collateral. He pays his gambling debts, still owes the loan at 6% interest. If he keeps on playing or can't pay off, he's in hock for his possessions. Knowing Garris, it's a cinch there's a slugfest brewing. Purvis and Barnes, you're especially concerned. With Garris's headquarters in your district and Cusick's outfit a few blocks away, you're riding a hot piece of territory. Keep your eyes open. Any questions? Anything you want to bring up? Any beefs? Very unusual morning. <laughs> Tiger, go in the kitchen and get your dinner. <laughs> that was good, Mom. Real good. I'm glad you enjoyed it. You go and sit down, honey. You look like you've had a hard day. I'll just stack the dishes tonight. I don't think I could look a dish rag in the face. Paper come yet? It's on the coffee table. Nothing exciting in it. How about that sale downtown? Oh, yes. I think it's on about page three. Any prospects on the flat? Um, what did you say, dear? Any prospects on the flat? Why, uh, yes, I, I, I forgot to tell you. I rented it today. Well, how could you forget to tell me that? That's wonderful. Who are the new neighbors? What are they like? Oh, a nice young couple. They said they'd probably move in tonight. You know, I think we're very lucky. We only had the sign out three days, and with all the new housing going up and all... That's one worry off our minds. Yes, isn't it? That's probably them now. I'll just give them the key, and they can go right in. I'll go. I want to get a look at them. Hello. Hi. Oh, no. A nice young couple, you said. That's us. Mother, you didn't. Well, for heaven's sake, Kate, why not? They're both good boys. You said so yourself. All right. You two have had your little joke. Now take your things and get out. You're not renting this apartment. But, Kate, they've paid a month's rent already. Well, give it back to them. But uh, I spent it. Uh, besides, we gave up our other place. You want us to sleep on the street? As far as I'm concerned, yes, after you pull a trick like this. Well, I thought it would give us a nice, safe feeling to have two members of the force right next door. Sure, you'll find we're no trouble at all, Kate. Quiet as mice. I don't even snore. No, I don't snore either. How nice. That makes everything just dandy. Here's the key. Thank you. Mother, how could you? You knew I particularly wanted to stay away from those two after office hours. 
Your father never ran away from anything, Kate. Well, I'm not running away. I'm staying away. The same thing. Besides, I think this whole attitude of yours toward policemen is cowardly. It's the only thing that's ever made me disappointed in you, Kate. Well, is it wrong to not go looking for trouble? You don't fall in love with men according to their occupation. You love with your heart, not your head. Now, Mother, don't you get any crazy ideas. If those two are going to stay next door, that wall is as close as they get to this place. And don't you dare start inviting them here to dinner or giving them the run of the house. Of course not. I've no intention of turning this place into a boarding house. voices, haven't they? trying to do, tear the walls down? Have we been making too much noise? Have you been? Oh, no. No! Heaven help us when you start making what you consider noise. Well, Kate, you're our first visitor. Come on, sit down right here. Hey, I'm sorry the place is so messed up, but you see the maid hasn't shown up yet. Why did you have to move here? Everything was so calm and peaceful. Oh, now, wait a minute, honey. Even you wouldn't have us living in that crummy one-room joint that we had. Oh, no. And besides, look at how interesting this will be once it's finished. It'll be like a museum. Whenever you get bored, you come in, you browse around. And what is all this junk, anyway? Junk, she calls Well, get it. that girl. You realize this stuff has a history to it? This sword we took off one of the most famous Japanese generals on Okinawa. And we took this airplane propeller off washing machine Charlie's plane on Guadalcanal. And, uh, who did you take this off of? Uh, Pappy? <laughs> oh, uh, uh, that, Miss Mallory, we, uh, we got from a tribal chieftain on Peru. <laughs> Good old Peru. Yeah, good and old here, Peru. Here's Purvis and Barnes on Guadalcanal. It's where I first met Pappy. Oh, wrong picture. <laughs> and I suppose from then on, the two of you were practically the entire United States Army. Smile when you say that, lady. We were both in the Marines, right? Right. Oh, well, this is all very interesting. But I didn't come in to sightsee. Now, look, fellas. I promise to stay on my side of the wall if you promise to stay on your side. And please, let's have a little peace and quiet. But of course. Well, as a matter of fact, Kate, you're not going to have us around much. Because the new watch schedule was posted today, and beginning the first of the month, we both go back on night watch. <laughs> so funny. <laughs> oh, the kid's really broken-hearted. Yeah. I give up. I'm never going to get rid of you two. <laughs> Lieutenant Masterson's going on night watch the first two, and he wants me to switch over with him. Well, how about that? You see, it's just fate. <laughs> well, looks like you're stuck with us, Kate. I guess so. I knew everything would work out all right. Say. I thought you'd like some coffee and sandwiches. Oh, you sweetheart, you. How about that, Pappy? Sure, all the comforts of home, huh? Mm. Will you pour, Miss Mallory? Well, here we go. Yes, indeedy. You know, Pappy? What about you to blow Kate and her mother to a big evening? All the meals we've had on them the past month, I'd say we were way overdue. Kate's kind of changed your mind about women, huh? What do you mean? You're not kidding me. You haven't backed out of one date. You've been getting a kick out of going out with her. Well, of course I get a kick out of it. She's a wonderful girl. How many girls like her do you meet? How many? That one's all I need. Hey, the club's really jumping tonight, huh? Mm-hmm. Guys, his car isn't there. What where goon boy is tonight. If we're lucky he's fallen down a sewer someplace. Aren't you coming with me? No, I got a little business to handle. I'll drop you off at the club. What kind of business, Richie? 
What it's are you business. doing? Come on. Hi, Terry. Oh, Kathy, sweetie. Shouldn't you be in bed? I waited to see you dressed up. Daddy said I couldn't come to your apartment. Said I'd bother you. Sweetie, you never bother me. Look, I, I'm a little late tonight. And I'm sorry I, I forgot your candy, but will you come up tomorrow and get it, huh? Okay. All right. Come on, Terry, come on. That's on, Kathy. Oh, good evening, Miss Romaine. Good evening. Mr. Garris. Bye, Terry. Bye, honey. Where did the shooting take place? Now, just take it easy, please. Where did the shooting take place? Oh, it was terrible, terrible. It was, and me and the wife ran out of the window and we saw... Uh, 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 where? Why, right in front of the Premier Loan Company. That's at, at 499 Archer Street. And they were in a big four-door sedan. I couldn't see the... Sounds like Garris's work. I'm going to broadcast. Look, Kate, I want you to check on these three. Lieutenant, hmm? may I go along? Sure. Why not? All units. All units. Shooting just occurred right. at 499 Archer Street. Two male suspects in four-door sedan. Last seen heading north on Archer Street. License unknown. Car 12, take the call. Eddie, take Code the mic. Two. 12, roger. He's all cars in 4, 5, and 7. All units on frequencies 4, 5, and 7 stand by. 14 and 18. Go to the north section of your district on Archer Street. Be on lookout for two male suspects involved in Archer Street shooting. Cusick's place. Looks like the boys have started. Swing over by the Starlight Club. They may be headed that way. 12, Lincoln Sedan ahead of us. In pursuit on Barber Street, heading west. <laughs> 12, still pursuing on. Suspect car turned east on Imperial. suspect car. They turned north off 2nd Street. Send 14 to Riverside and 81st. 18 to Rogers and Templar Road. 14, stand by Block B, Riverside and 81st. 18, stand by at Templar and Rogers Road. Tell 13 to cut over to Vernon Highway. 13, 1, 3. Cut over to Vernon Highway. Cars 14 and 18 are closing in at Templar and Rogers Road. Let's go, Pappy. We're on the beam. This is one rat race I've got my heart in. Probably heading for Vernon Highway. 13 gets there quick enough, they'll pick him up. 1-3, suspects going east on Imperial Road. Maybe headed for Vernon Highway. 13, Roger, coming into Vernon. That's our baby. 13, in pursuit of speeding car, believed to be shooting suspect, heading west on 2nd Street. 13, Roger. <laughs> 13, suspects just passed intersection. Barnes and Vernon, heading east on Vernon Highway, in pursuit. 13, Roger. All units, suspects heading east on Vernon Highway. 13, go ahead. 13, Roger.
Street tonight, too, Sis Crate. Freezing up at 75. Watch out, Ron! 13. 1 3. 13. 13. Acknowledge your call. Code 1 13. 13. Acknowledge your call. Stick here and stew. So Chris was the guy who plugged Chusik. Thanks for telling us which one of you did it. Get up here. Put his prints on the rifle. All you gotta do is say I was driving and he had the rifle. He's dead. You blew half his head off. He can't talk back. Turn around. Turn around. Turn around. Damn, both of them. Ten grand for the two of you. Twenty grand. You won't see that kind of dough in five years. You just went bankrupt, Garris. You finally shot your way right into the electric chair. <laughs> Dirty stinking coppers! I'll beat this and I'll get the two of you. So help me, I'll get both you dirty stinking flatfoots! Yeah, go on, go on. Keep get your hand off of me! Everything okay, Dan? Yeah, yeah, sure. Thirteen. Thir hey, Tex, our radio's on the blink. Report a code four for us, will you, and tell them to send an ambulance? Right. 12 for 13. 11L. 11L. 12 reported for 13. Shooting suspects in custody on Vernon Highway and Overland Hill section. They requested an ambulance. An ambulance for 13? Hold on to yourself, Kate. Somebody in 13 told 12 to report in for him. Somebody? It's only a couple of miles, Kate. We'll be there in a few minutes. Here we are. Dan? Oh, Dan? Hey, what are you doing here? Where's Rocky, Dan? What happened to him? What happened to Rocky, him? Rocky, Kate, what are you doing? Working overtime? Rocky. Rocky, I thought you were hurt. Well, who'd want to hurt me? Rocky. Rocky. Uh, hey, Ziggy. Come on, let's get that body out of the front seat. Right. All right, Doc, you got him passed up enough. Let's move along. Chicks. Oh, Pappy? Just three more weeks. I don't know whether I can stand it. Say, why don't you two get married right away? And I can have a little peace and quiet around here. Not in your life. This is Barnes' first and only honeymoon, and I'm not interrupting it to testify at the Garris trial. We'll wait till after. And then, two weeks of uninterrupted living. Be right with you. You 
lucky girl. Hey, where's my tie? Tie, tie, so... Oh, I know. Yeah, I'm sitting on it. Sorry. Oh, thanks. Well, hurry up and get dressed, will you? She's all ready. Junior, you're on your own tonight. I'm staying home. What, spending only night off at home? Well, I got a lot of things to do. Tonight's as good a night as any to do them. Like what? Well, I catch up on my reading and, uh, well, I got a lot of things. Say, who are you anyway, the DA or something? Look, Pappy, you know, just because Kate and I are getting married doesn't mean to say the act's breaking up. You're still one of the family. Thanks a lot. Wake up, Rocky. At a time like this, three's a crowd. Besides, I'm busy anyway. Well, you've been ducking this all week. Kate thinks you saw it something. What? What do I got to be sore about? No, no kidding, Rocky. You run along. I told you I got things to do, and I'll catch up to you some other time. Okay. But you know, you're welcome. Sure. And uh, don't wait up, Ma. I may be a little late. Right. Good night, Pappy. Good night. reached a verdict? We have. The defendant will rise and face the jury. Read the verdict. We find the defendant guilty of murder in the first degree. If there is no objection, the court is prepared to impose sentence immediately. No objection, Your Honor. It is the judgment of this court that for the crime of murder in the first degree for which you have been convicted, you be delivered by the sheriff of this county to the warden of the state penitentiary, there to be executed in the manner prescribed by the laws of this state. And may God have mercy on your soul. I now remand you to the custody of the sheriff. Stay in town, baby. Don't go nowhere. Just stay put. Hey, coppers. Don't sleep too good. I'll get you, so help me, I'll get you. Anxious to see you up at the pen. Hey! What's the matter? Hey, you can see for yourself. This thing's busted open again. Hey, let me have the doc take a look at it before we grab that train, huh? What do you think, Tom? Yeah. Doc's still upstairs, Fred. Yeah, he's around till seven. Come on, let's go. Well, if it's bleeding, we'd better have a look at it. Let's get you cold off, son. Snap it up, will you, Doc? We gotta get going with this bird. Just as fast as I can. Just as fast as I can. Halfway down the block, that's as close as we could get. All right, all right. Hold it. Get the car. Only 
one special order of business tonight. Captain Evers has something to say. Early this afternoon, three of Garris's hoods, Adams, Peters, and a third man, were killed by state highway police trying to crash the blockade at Trentonville. Garris wasn't with his boys. He's crazy enough to be still around town. The detective bureau has stakeouts at his apartment, his nightclub, his usual haunts. But we're ordering a citywide alert for all radio car men also. Keep your eyes open. You have orders to shoot to kill. Purvis and Barnes, report to my office right after roll call. On your hot sheets in the nine column. I just want to warn you, boys. Stay on your guard on and off duty. Garris might try and make good his threat to get you. He was just shooting off his mouth to make himself feel better. Hmm, maybe. But his not being with his top hoods when they try to make a run for it doesn't add up. If he's still in town, he's got some wild scheme in that cracked brain of his. What about his girl, Lieutenant? Oh, she's still around. If he tries to contact her, he'll get mad. But I don't think he'll do that. He's not that dumb. She's too close to home. You, you stay on your toes. You've already disrupted my office enough. Disrupted your office? Yeah. With Kate taking a leave of absence, I gotta break in a new girl. It's a nuisance. You're not mad enough to back out of giving the bride away, are you, Lieutenant? Uh, not that mad. <laughs> you just see nothing happens to the groom before Saturday. Don't worry. Go on. Get on duty. You know something, Pappy? You never can tell about people. Now, Masterson, he isn't such a bad old goat after all. Bright boy. Took you only two years to find that out. Well, with him giving Kate away, that practically makes him my father-in-law. I ought to be in solid. Swing over to the chop house, get a good steak under our belts. Rocky, look out! She's on her way, Rock. Good. Good.
Rocky. How are you, Kate? Hey, sport. You trying to back out of the wedding? Must be an easier way than this. You wouldn't let a gal down, would you? Not you, Kate. But Garris interfered after all. Yes, darling. Don't let Pappy make too much noise in the next apartment. Sitting here night after night trying to play on her nerves. If she had anything to tell, she'd have cracked by now. Yeah. Those rock hearted dames don't crack easy, but she'll crack. Believe me, she'll crack. They couldn't do it at headquarters. They think she's on the level about being through with Garris. A dame like that leveling? Are you kidding? <laughs> she's just playing it cute. She's laughing at how she conned the police, waiting for a chance to make her move. Look at her. She's not even worried. She goes home at night and sleeps like a cat, dreams about a bloodthirsty boyfriend. How many hours sleep have you had the last few weeks? About as few as you, I expect. Sure. You don't sleep, I don't sleep. With that doll face gutter rat, she sleeps. She eats, drinks, nothing bothers her. You know what I think? I think maybe we are getting under her skin. No, no, she's just annoyed. We're not getting anywhere this way, Dan. Let's go home. Yeah, I guess you're right, we're not. You know, I'm sick of wasting time. I think that dame's ready to crack, and I'm not going to waste time any longer. You wait for me. But Dan, don't. I figured you would do to start something, sitting there every night staring holes through me. What do you want, anyway? Richie Garris. Well, that's more than I want. Go find him. You're welcome to him. I'll find him. Because you're going to tell me where he is, or so help me, I'll tear your head off. Dan, look, I told him four times I don't know. I don't want to know. Why don't you guys believe me? Because you'd lie to your own mother on a deathbed. You know where he is. You're just waiting for your chance to go to him. You're crazy. I don't care if he's caught. I don't care if they even kill him now. You're a liar. You know where he is. Come on, tell me. Where is he? Where is he? I don't know. I don't know. Come on, tell me. Where is he? Where is he? Where is he? <laughs> Come on, where is he? Where is he? Stop it, stop it, Dan.
I was afraid of this, but I hoped I'd never see it happen. Am I slapping a woman? All right, I lost my head. But I don't class tramps like her as women. It's what's happening to you I'm talking about. I know what I'm doing, Kate. The only thing these hoodlums understand is an iron fist. Dan, you're wrong. You're as wrong as I was when I kept insisting no policeman in my life. If I hadn't been afraid of being hurt, I'd have joined the department long ago. I'd have met Rocky sooner, and we would have at least had a couple of years together. I made a mistake then, Dan. You're making one now. How? By trying to get Rocky's killer? No. By letting bitterness over Rocky's death make a brute out of you. A brutal policeman is a terrible thing. He has too much power. Too many chances of taking his viciousness out on helpless people. Well, that's a great speech. Why don't you pin a medal on Garris for killing the man you were going to marry? That was a terrible thing to say, Dan. I'm sorry. I must be crazy for talking to you like this, Kate. Forget I ever said that, will you? Take me home, Dan. I don't want to talk anymore. Just take me home. Yeah. Hamburgers and coffee. What a great dinner for Saturday night. Better feed the boys in the basement. Yeah. Here, take it. Hold on to this phone, will you? Time. And your little pigeon just came home. That's nice. It's about time you got here, too. Switch on, Eddie. The remains just arrived. Uh -huh. Hamburgers again? Yeah. How much longer are we going to be stuck in this hole? Nothing ever happens in that dame's apartment. She gets no phone calls, calls nobody. All I'm getting out of it is a bench sparring. Dean sure have been hitting the bottle lately. Yeah. You should have heard the yelling when I told the old lady I'd have to do this takeout tonight, too. Yeah, I know. But I think they're about ready to call it off. I hope. Sounds like traffic on the fire escape. Could be. Himself. Cover the front and back, but stay out of sight. No action unless he tries to leave. Right. G, location one. G, location one. You must be crazy coming here. Sure I am. Crazy about you. Smart. Every cop in town looking for me, and here I am. You packing, huh? Going some ways? As far away as I can get. Yeah? Well, it's all set up, baby. Car on the next block, a boat in the harbor. We're going down to Mexico. Pack one bag we can carry. I'm not going with you, Richie. It's all over. 
I don't want anything more to do with you. What do you mean it's over? We got too much between us, baby. We always played it for keeps, didn't we? That's before you started spilling blood all over the streets. Look, I could go for these grab bag rackets, but I can't stand blood on me. Blood don't wash off, Richie. There's not going to be any more of it. You hear that? We're finished. I figured you'd be on your high horse. What do you think I risk my skin hanging around town for, huh? Coming here myself. You're going away, baby, with me. Get that bag ready. I said get it ready! All units in vicinity G, location one. Code two, there now. Kate. Garris, is that his girl's apartment? Take care of that, John. Give the cat. Units 11K, 14K, 16K, units 28, 56, 50, 13, code 2, at G location 1. There now. Find out who it is. Yes? It's me, Kathy. Kathy, you must... Shut up. Richie, please. I said shut up. Ah, this is shaping up perfect. Better kids coming with us till we get to the car, just in case we run into trouble. This is gonna throw a nice block on the boys. How'd you like to go for a little trip, huh? Sure. <laughs> it's my girl. It's my girl. Hey, now tell me, what did you do today, huh? Well, it's, I... it's almost her bedtime, Richie. Her father will be looking for her any minute. No, Mom said I could stay up until ten tonight. On account of your leaving in the morning. Well, sure. Look, you got an hour and a half yet. Finish packing. Good, Pete. I'm glad to hear the wife's good. Six of you get up on the roof. The rest of my boys stay with me. Barry, you and Pete cover the back area. Schmidt, take the alley. We better check the people in the other apartments on the fourth floor. Right. We've got to take this maniac by surprise if possible, so wait for the signal. All right, let's go. Try calling her out of the apartment? Yes, oh, yes. All right. Take care of things down here. All right. Dan, tell the boys with the searchlights to get them set to hit the corner of apartment fourth floor. Send a couple of our cars around behind to throw their spots on the rear of the apartment. Check. You boys stick around here in the lobby. Nat told you to be a good girl and go to sleep. And I mean come it. On, come on, Terry. We ain't good all night. her bedtime. She has to come right away. In a minute. In a minute. 
In a minute. I'll send her down in a minute. Now, look. Don't be frightened. We're gonna play a little joke on Mommy, huh? Sure. Atta girl. Put your dolly to sleep over there. Don't let her make no noise. Okay. Go on. Shh. Don't make any noise now. And you go right to sleep now. That's a good girl. Now we get up on the sleep. the chair, I'm going to make you sleep on the couch. Kathy, you sure your mother said you could stay up till 10 tonight? Oh, yes, she did, she did. Something's off. Way off. Richie, I told you that. Don't tell me nothing. floor to get out right away. Stop your calling! Stop it! Stay put and keep quiet. Come on, Terry, hurry it up, will you? We can't be bothered, right? You shake it up, Terry. The kid's getting us a free ride through the cops. All you gotta do is walk to the car. <laughs> the floor behind that desk. Go on.
take it easy. What are you squawking about, Captain? That's the best Garrus has ever looked. Oh, very funny. Excuse me, please. Yeah, there he goes. Mr. Purvis, I... I don't know what to say. I... I... I know, I know. Take good care of him, miss. I will. Goodbye, Kathy. Bye. Thanks, Doc. Smile pretty for the camera, Danny boy. Hi, man. Hey, Purvis. Hi, Chronicle. How are you? You got a light? Sure. Is that really on the level that Romaine Dame got knocked off saving you? Yeah, that's on the level. You know, she couldn't have been such a bad cookie after all. No, I guess she wasn't. Yeah, but that don't make sense, a dame like that saving a cop. Well, maybe if she'd never met a guy like Garrish, she wouldn't have become a dame like that, huh? Yeah. Maybe you got something. Maybe I have. Good night, fellas. See you. Good night. Good night. You know, you're beginning to sound like Rocky. Well, is that bad? No, Officer Purvis, it certainly isn't. <laughs> 